We we'll begin in Kaduna State, which has come under several attacks by terrorists since the last one week. The latest is the invasion of another community in Chikun local government area of the state by rampaging terrorists who killed two persons, injured others, and kidnapped an unspecified number. Community members told TVC News the terrorists came in large numbers, shooting sporadically before invading the area. Lupe Assam reports. Another brazen attack by terrorists in Kaduna. The fifth in five days. This time, the assailants attacked a community in Chikun local government area, and about 15 houses were invaded. Several persons were kidnapped, including the pastor and a retired police officer. Others who were shot have been confirmed dead. We get to know two people are killed for now. About uh, four of them are in the hospital receiving treatment. Because for now, for now the numbers we can be able to gather, they are about 15 years about. The attack comes four days after terrorists bombed the Kaduna-bound train, killing eight persons and kidnapping others. Residents of the community expressed disappointment at the inability of the government to stem the surge of killings and kidnappings. Christians are dying. Muslims are dying. Let Buhari come and say something about the killing in Kaduna State. It had to stop. Government are no longer trying to us. So what we need in this area is self-defense. If the government can be able to recruit like 100 youth, even without paying us, at least as a voluntary soldier, they should give up and we are going to face these people. Meanwhile, the governor is set to brief the president on the recent happenings in the state. But he's also calling for extreme actions against the bandits. He feels there is no better time to bomb terrorists out of existence. And the problems of banditry and terrorism in the Northwest far outweigh what we are seeing or we have seen ever in the Northeast. And it is time for the Nigeria Air Force and the Army to bomb these terrorists out of existence. With the declaration by the Federal High Court that these bandits are terrorists, nothing stops the military, the police, and other security agencies to take an extreme action to terminate these bandits without prejudice. We apologize for our inability to protect everyone. The governor has also promised to ask the president to deploy more security personnel and equipment into the state. Lupe Assam, TVC News, Kaduna. In Ondo, the Nigerian army is seeking cooperation of traditional rulers in tackling security challenges affecting the country. The commander of 32 Artillery Brigade of the Nigerian Army, Akure, Brigadier General Mukhtar Adamu, who spoke at the Palace of the Olowo for War, said the military will continue to protect the territorial integrity of the country. Ayode Jimuradeo reports. Nigeria has witnessed serious security challenges in the past few days. The attack of a passenger train along Abuja, Kaduna, where many were killed and several others injured, brought to the fore the lapses in Nigeria's security apparatus. In Ondo State, the commander of 32 Artillery Brigade of the Nigeria Army, Akure Brigadier General Mukta Adamu, who was recently posted to the state, is moving around to seek cooperation of the people in tackling criminality in the state. He is at the palace of the Olowo of Owo or Bajiba de Ogunye, to tell the monarch about the need for traditional rulers to be partners in progress with the army. The brigade commander believes that traditional rulers have an important role to play in the scheme of things. They are enjoying their stay here. There is no much problem. So I come here to appreciate you for all the support and, um, and encouragement and you are giving to our troops and also to seek your own royal blessing so that together we shall all um, synergize and make Owo, Ondo State and indeed our dear country, Nigeria, very safe and secure. I think the Nigerian army has understood... The Olowo wants better synergy among security agencies. This is believes will go a long way in tackling security challenges in the country. Uh, the need for security is very paramount. That will work hand in hand. Uh, I believe that having passed through the army over the years and attaining the, 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 the post of brigadier general is not an easy task. Uh, I know you have passed through the fiery furnace to be so prepared for the task ahead. So ours is just to continually uh, wish you well and to cooperate with you. This visit by the commander 
of 32 artillery brigades will go a long way in restoring the confidence of the civilian population in the army. Ayodeji Moradeyo, TVC News, Akure. Staying in Ondo, the State Police Command has launched an investigation into the alleged attack of Chairman of the State House of uh, Assembly's Committee on Information, Benga Omoli. Spokesperson of the command, Fumi Odulami, said those behind the attack would be exposed. Mr. Molly was allegedly attacked on Thursday by some hoodlums in the heart of Akure while driving in the evening. Before the incident, the lawmaker said he had received anonymous calls threatened to deal with him. He also said he was able to escape the assassination attempt through the grace of God. After 8 p.m. last night, I was driving towards Oyemekun Road just after the pedestrian bridge at uh, Obadeshida Road. I just heard gunshots, three gunshots, simultaneously. So I was, I was choked, but at the same time, I was alert. So thank God there was no traffic. I just sped off. I was, I didn't, you know, something that happened just suddenly like that. And I just sped off. I, I sped off like two kilometers before I now parked. And the station and lodged a complaint that while he was on his way to Kutele Mila Estate, he had a bank close to the driver's side of his door and the screen was shattered. Yes, he had made his complaint and the police are started investigating. So I just want to urge our people to just relax, let the police investigate and get to the root of the matter. Like I said, the police are started investigating. Of course, he will give us information to help with the investigation, but we don't want us to just jump into conclusion concerning anything until we are through with the investigation. Now to Sakwato, where the State Police Command has paraded three suspected criminals, including a housewife who kidnapped a three-year-old boy of her neighbor at Gidamadi in Tangaza local government area. While parading the suspect, the State Public Relations Officer, Senusi Abubuka, said the suspect was arrested when she came to pick up the two millionaire ransom she demanded from the father of the child. She said the suspect revealed she learned the act of kidnapping through listening to radio programs where stories of how people are being kidnapped were narrated. Also paraded were two suspects arrested for burgling a department at the state-owned specialist hospital and carted away valuables, including four air conditioners. The police said all the suspects will be charged to court at the conclusion of investigation. His three-year-old child named Muhammad Naziru was reported missing. Later, at about 22.20 hours of the same date, he received a call from a known person with a hidden number inform him, informing him that his son was kidnapped by him. Therefore, he should bring the sum of two million naira as ransom. Otherwise, he will kill the victim. Upon investigation, one Farida Usmani F of the same address was arrested by a team of CID operatives in conjunction with detectives attached to Gidam Madi in an attempt to receive the ransom money, where she confessed to have kidnapped the victim on 30th March 2022 at about 10.00 hours and took him to Tangaza town and deceitfully kept him under the custody of her cousin's sister. To judicial matters now, the Court of Appeal sitting in Enugu has upheld the decision of the Abakaliki High Court bordering on the defection of Ibon State Governor David Omahi and his deputy Kelechi Igwe from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress. The lead judge, Justice Alpha Belgore, held that the appeal filed by the candidate of the APC in the 2019 governorship election, Senator Sonia Ogboji, lacked merit and that the cases cited are totally irrelevant to the matter brought before the court. Justice Belgore further pointed out that the removal of Governor Omahi and his deputy lies in the hands of the legislature and must be in line with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. While citing Section 308 of the Constitution, the judge pointed out that no legal action can be taken against a certain president and vice president, as well as a certain governor and his deputy. He therefore dismissed the appeal with a 200,000 naira fine against the appellant. 
Delta State Governor Ifanyo Koa wants the incessant disagreement between multinational oil companies and host communities in the Niger Delta region to be resolved amicably, so it will not lead to more divestment in the oil sector. Governor Koa spoke while inaugurating roads projects in Wari Southwest local government area. Ikena Michi reports. <laughs> Protests, stoppage or disruption of operation of oil companies are some ways host communities express dissatisfaction with these companies when they are in disagreement. But as Governor Okowa arrives, the oil bearing Ogidikben in Wari Southwest for the inauguration of roads, he is quick to address the issue. I'm aware that many of our communities have begun to have challenges with various uh, oil producing uh, companies uh, and we need to handle everything with care. We know that they are not meeting up with most of, their, of the demands that we make, but we also have to be careful so that we don't stop them from further investing in our country, Nigeria. What will not be enough for us to express our deep appreciation? The people who are appreciative also demanded for more intervention in their area, especially their school and hospital, a place the governor visited and expressed shock at the level of deterioration. He orders for immediate rehabilitation. And I must publicly apologize to the people of Ogidigbe about the state of the hospital. And I'll be expecting the Minister of Housing between now and the weekend, this weekend, to come in to do estimate for a total rehabilitation of the hospital and also to intervene in other needs of the hospital. Next is the inauguration of the 2.8 kilometers road in Benekrukru, as the governor is intentional about development of the riverine areas. What I have seen here today has brought a lot of joy to me. The community, the presence of the community and the joy in the community has also touched me. So may God help me to be able to do more in the name of Jesus. The day's activities rounded off with the inauguration of some projects constructed by the Burutu Council Chairman. Governor Okowa then pledges to upgrade the School of Marine Technology in Burutu. Ikenna Amechi, TVC News, Burutu. Let's now turn to Bordono State, where about 500 students from Guzamala local council area are to benefit from a 4.4 million naira scholarship to further their education. That's according to the Speaker of the Borno State House of Assembly. TVC News' Jesse Tafida reports. The 12th year Boko Haram insurgency has been a setback to the Borno State education sector. Many children have been orphaned by terrorist attacks, forcing thousands to drop out of school. But the Speaker of Borno State House of Assembly, Abdul Karim Nawan, is determined to ensure that the student in his constituency go back to school. He has set the ball rolling by sponsoring 446 students to study in any tertiary institution within the state. Uh, I know the scholarships in the various tertiary institutions in the state is in a very high level. I am sure it will be going to push some of the problems. By next year, inshallah, we are going to be another. Scholarships to Abdul Karim Lawan tasked the military to redouble efforts in their fight against insurgency in order to make Kuzamala safe for his people to return. I insist that Kuzamala local government is still under the because this is not my first time to mention this kind of statement. All our people in Kuzamala local government were taking refugees either in the IDP camps or in the hospital. So I'm appealing to the federal government and the Nigerian military. Stakeholders lauds the foresight of the speaker and his commitment to giving the students a bright future. This is a very interesting gesture and the, the first of its kind. I've never seen somebody who's given scholarship to over 1,000 students at a time and every year. I actually students student to make very good use of the money they get. As you can see 
from our faces there is a clear indication that every student now is very happy. We are very glad from his gesture. And uh, inshallah, like I said earlier, we will not let him down as we promise to make proper good use of this scholarship. So far, over 8,000 students have benefited from this gesture by the speaker, Bernard State House of Assembly. It is said that education is the bedrock of every society. And this move by the speaker, Bernard State House of Assembly, Abdul Karim Lawan, will go a long way towards catering the educational needs of the students. Jesse Tofida, TVC News, Meiduguri. Ocean State Governor Gwoyegao Yetola has approved the upgrade of the State College of Education, Elisha, to a full-fledged university. The governor said the sustainability plan for the upgrade of the institution is being worked out. He made the announcement during the inauguration of Land Geriatric Center, built in Elisha. Rafiu Hamid reports. Here is the Ijesha Geriatric Center, a billionaire project. The idea of the project was conceived in 2020, and now the center has been completed and equipped. It was put together by sons and daughters of Ijesha land without any input from both the federal and the state governments. Motived for establishing the second geriatric center in Nigeria is to improve on the health care access of our elderly. The hospital will specialize in the treatment of health issues that are common in the elderly. This project is a standalone project that will look after the health of people 60 years and above. And apart from that, we also have an immunization building so that we can vaccinate people and make sure that vaccine preventable illnesses like COVID and so on are eliminated in our land. What we are doing today is further strengthening the relationship among the sons and daughters of Ijezaland. I congratulate the sons and daughters of Ijezaland, both of and uh, in Dasura. For me, it's a celebration again of the Ijezha indomitable spirit of self-help. The governor says the project is complementary to his administration's investment in health. May remind us that the strength and usefulness of this center and the good use to which it is put may I therefore employ our people to visit this facility for their personal health care while also urging us all to ensure its maintenance. The announcement of upgrade of the State College of Education, Elisha, to a university status by the governor was received with joy at the event. And so that he has done it shows that he's a caring governor and he has a support 110 percent. Thank God that it made it possible. He made it possible. We now we are now a university town. He's a listening governor. He hacking to our request. We've been on this this university upgrade for eight years. The one billionaire right geriatric center is the second of its kind in Nigeria and it's expected to be handed over to the management of the Obama family and the University of the Hospital election for use. Rafiq Hamid, TVC News, Elisha. Members of the National Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, NUPENG, have picketed the office of oil giant Chevron in Lekki area of Lagos. In this report, TVC News senior correspondent Sharon Ejason tells us why that happened. These are members of the National Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, NUPENG. They are protesting against the questionable deaths of one of its members, Babalola Oladimeji, who was a staff of Sebnido General Services, a contractor to Chevron. Oladimeji, who was a contract staff of the company for more than 15 years, according to his colleagues, died mysteriously in active service. He has worked all his life diligently for the growth of this great company. He was attached to the airport and he was lodged at Genesis Hotel, Ikeja, on the 15th of December. On the 20th of December, his colleagues that they locked them together at that hotel, was looking for him in the morning to go on his various duties. They couldn't find him in his room. Wife and children of Babalola Oladimeji said three months after their father's death, 
they have not been allowed to see his body. They are not happy that investigations have not taken place and their father's body is yet to be buried. We want justice because they, they said they, they met inside the swimming pool and he does not swim. My dad does not swim. And again, play the, the, the hotel could not play the CCTV camera. Definitely, he was murdered at the hotel. And even the hotel, they could not even close down the hotel or investigate. They did not investigate ever since then. He just kept quiet like he's, he's an animal. The chairman of Lagos Zone of Nupeng, Tayo Aboyeji, insists that Chevron must ensure that workers have collective bargaining agreement. We have been to the Federal Ministry of Labor more than seven times. And they pronounce and know that they should go and meet us and give these people a good uh, 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 welfare package. Right? When, it, when we get to Lagos, Chevron and Supermedo said, no, Ministry of, uh, Ministry of Labor are just seen their own. Now they have sent a list of people that will retire this April. And the question is, if they retire, what is their benefit? I took time to get reactions from the management of Chevron, but they declined to respond. Sharon Jackson, TVC News. The National Union of Nigerian Associations in Italy says it is planning a visit to the National Assembly to clamor for a reconsideration of the diaspora voting bill rejected by the Senate. The Welfare Secretary of the Association says Nigerians outside the country are yearning to be included in the voting process. Moyo Thomas reports. For some years now, Nigerians in diaspora have been agitating for an opportunity to participate in Nigeria's election. The believe as citizens, the opportunity should also be made available to them, as is obtainable in other countries. The glimmer of hope that these will be made possible was quickly dimmed when the Diaspora Voting Bill refused to garner majority votes at the National Assembly for the needed constitution review. The association describes this as sad. We are hungry to vote in Diaspora because we want to choose our leader, because we have a voice in this country. We contribute more than 50% or the development through investment to this country, so we want to vote. So I would say for the diaspora voting, we are interested in it. We are hungry for it, and we want to be part of it. Experts believe the Senate may have rejected the bill due to fear of election malpractice, right. but the association well, says it has already yeah, thought out a method that could be free from rigging. We have foreign missions all over the world. And we have Nigerian passport, and no, no passport carries the same number. What do, uh, do I need to do? At least let's start with that, voting with our passports, with our Nigerian passport. Let us register, create centers. I need to create centers for us in our missions, in the foreign missions, where to go and register and obtain a voter's card with our passport number. With this, let us start, let's start this thing, you know. Uh, let's do it in an analog way, if we cannot go digital. Mike Opute, who is also contesting for the chairman of Nigerians in Diaspora under the All Progressives Congress, says being political is also a method of ensuring the voices of Nigerians in Diaspora are heard on such matters. With over 15 million Nigerians in diaspora and remittances storing over $20 billion annually, giving this population an opportunity to vote or choose a leader of their choice will give them a sense of belonging and relevance in the affairs of the country beyond just economic contributions. Moya Thomas, TVC News, Abuja.